Well, hello there, everyone. Hope you're doing outstanding. It is simply Saturday, April the 1st in the year 2023. And just so you know, I got breaking news I'm going to share towards the end of the video. I'll try to keep it short so you don't have to wait too long. And, hmm, am I saying that because it's April Fool's Day? Perhaps. April Fool's Day. Happy April Fool's Day. So what I'm going to talk about today is if you're a real estate investor, or want to be a real estate investor, do you buy local to yourself, like you know your backyard, your area, or do you buy out of your area? That's a question that a lot of people debate with themselves, with their local real estate meetup group, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you buy local or do you buy out of your area? Many investors prefer to buy local. You know, with that being said, I am Maskey Finance. I'm coming to you currently from South Florida, I am prepping and preparing to hopefully move outside the United States here soon to test out living outside of the U.S. once again in my life, because I've done it before. And then I will return to the United States and perhaps bounce around on the Maskey Tour. <laughs> okay. So with that being said, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. And I dare say I never want to tell you what to do. You make your own decisions. You're a person. You got your own mind. Make your own decisions. Be an informed investor. Be an educated and be an educated investor. Take what I say. Take what everyone says in books, YouTube channels, etc., etc., etc. Use your own mind. Formulate your own thoughts, desires, opinions, expectations, etc. Okay, and then we'll see how it all plays out. So here's my perspective on buying local, buying outside the area. I started off as an investor in the state of Virginia. When I first started, I had I knew what a property manager was. I did not want one. I was like, I'll do it myself. I can do it myself. I always did everything myself. So I bought a rental house and I screwed up because I did it myself <laughs> without knowing what I was doing. And I did not properly screen my tenant and she promptly stopped paying me rent and I had to evict her. I went through the process all by myself, filed the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, went to court, judge ruled in my favor, she had to get out, okay? I then took a crash course in learning how to screen tenants. It's not that complicated, but I, I did it. And by the time I did it a couple times because I bought other properties in Virginia, I found websites I could use where I would send the tenant a link and they'd have to pay, I think it was like $29.99, something like that. And they put their information in. I wouldn't see it necessarily, their information they put in. And a background check would be run on them. And a credit check would be run on them. And it would come to me and them. And I would lay out the criteria that I was looking for. So if they did not want to pay that $29.99, so be it, okay? But if they do want to pay it, then that's how I got my tenants. And most property managers will charge an application application fee, okay? If, so tenants are used to this. So don't think you're scaring tenants away. <coughs> what I tried to do was be very clear with any potential tenant that this money is non-refundable and if you do not qualify, the money's not refundable, okay? I didn't make anything on it. It was $29.992, whatever the company was. It seemed like it might've been Experian, okay? And then I bought a, I bought one single family home, I bought a second single family home, I bought a triplex. While I owned that triplex, I had a desire to get rid of all three tenants that were in there, and I knew I had to renovate the building. I acted kind of sort of as a general contractor. I had to hire contractors. I had to legally, but slowly over time, get tenants out. I got one tenant out, renovated their apartment, got a new tenant in. Second tenant ended up leaving, renovated their apartment, got a new one in. Third tenant ended up leaving, got renovated that apartment. And while I renovated them, I re had to extensively renovate, replace water lines, replace fixtures, put in new toilets, new sinks, new vanities, new mir uh, mirrors in the bathrooms buy some refrigerators, buy some stoves, 
Um, but luxury vinyl plank for all the flooring. Uh, outside, I bought, I think it was eight or 10 of those five gallon buckets of asphalt sealer. And I went there one day and sealed the park, front parking lot. And I said, I'm not doing the back one. The back one's bigger. So I paid one of my contractors. He sealed the back parking lot for me. He rebuilt uh, privacy fences that were there. They're wooden privacy fences. Rebuilt what needed to be rebuilt and stained them. Uh, did some work to the outside of the building. So we, I spent, I think, 60 ish thousand dollars renovating that building. I was, in quotes, the general contractor. It kind of sort of stressed me out. <laughs> During the process of doing this, I got scanned by a plumber. Okay, it cost me, I don't know, five thousand dollars that I lost. Got scanned by a plumber. Okay, I, I consider him to be a thief with what he did. That's a story for another day. All right, but along the way, while I was doing this, I had also found bigger pockets and decided to buy a property out of state. I used bigger pockets to develop some contacts and I bought a house in Birmingham, Alabama. That was my first adventure using a property manager ever. Okay, I liked the idea by then. I was stressed out from evicting a tenant and being a general contractor and getting other tenants out of that triplex and I was a little stressed out from it, okay? So I liked the idea of going outside. And when I did that, I had some problems with that first property manager. I tried not to be a control freak, but I was used to being in control. So I had to adapt. But then there was different things that property manager did that it's like, whoa, I just like totally disagreed with. He um, just, Gave me bad information, wrong, totally wrong information. So I found a new property manager and went to a second one. And then I ended up going over time, went to a third one. Okay. I did buy a second house in the Birmingham area. I have now sold both those houses in the Birmingham area. Okay. I'm not saying Birmingham is a bad area to invest in, but for me, I was not successful. I didn't lose money on either house. I didn't make a lot of money by the time it was all said and done or... I think I made a little bit of money on both, maybe ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on one, and a little bit on the other. Maybe a little more than that. I can't remember. Without looking, but anyway. Um, but along the way of doing that, I also started buying up in Indiana, and I used a property manager. I met this property manager. I was up there, sat down, and talked to him, and then I bought some more houses. And they, it was a different property manager. I used a turnkey company, so they used one. PM property manager for outside of the city of Gary and another PM for inside the city of Gary. As I started buying more inside the city of Gary, I got up to like four, five, six, seven. I started looking at it. That one house I had with a different property manager, I felt it wasn't the right fit. So I moved that house over to the management company, the other property manager, and I've been with them ever since. Okay. I have done my best to back off, not be a control freak, but I do text or email a fair amount. I stay in touch with them, okay? So that being said, do you buy local to you? Do you buy out of the area? If you buy local to yourself, you have the advantage. You can self-manage if you want to, but there's a lot to self-managing. You gotta have the right temperament, all right? You gotta know how to manage uh, tenants. You got to know how to screen tenants. You got to know how to market your rental, advertise your rental. You have to know how to manage the money and that sort of thing as you get the rent ends. But you don't have to pay a property management fee. But how much is your time worth? Do you have the time to do that? Do you? Okay. Now here's a problem with buying outside of your area. You may hear me say, Northwest Indiana is the king. Invest there. You may hear me say, if you invest in Chicago and you do it the way I did, you can be successful. You may hear me say one day that I'm investing in Kansas City, or I'm investing in Pittsburgh, or I'm investing in Memphis, or I'm investing in San Diego, or San Antonio. Okay? And you may want to jump on my coattails and copy me. Don't do that. Because when you invest, invest out of the area, it's not just picking an area. Okay, that's a big part of it. You got to choose the area, but you got to have your boots on the ground before you buy in any area, whatever market you think you want to buy. In. If you want to buy in Gary, 
before you buy in Gary, do your research and reach out and find property managers, real estate agents, maybe find contractors. That might be harder to find a contractor when you don't own a property, but if you can find either a superstar real estate agent that matches up with you or a superstar property manager that matches up with you, it'll make life easier. But when you're not living there, you got to manage them. Manage, it's your investment. You have to manage them from afar. You got to, how do you know 100% confidently that they're not going to screw you over? It's a learning curve. Sometimes you got to take it on faith. But you got to go there and meet those people. Okay? We do have technology. You do have Zoom and you have that kind of stuff. Maybe you can meet them this way. But there's nothing like meeting someone in person. Okay? But it comes down to a personal decision. It's up to you. And I've always said this. You can find a deal in any market. There are successful real estate investors all around this country. West Coast, East Coast, North, South, Midwest, everywhere. You can find rental property everywhere. Now, the problem is if you live on the East Coast or West Coast, prices might be pretty expensive. If you invest in the Midwest, they might be cheaper. But investing in the Midwest, what's your tenant base? Who are your property managers? What do you do? But as I told somebody recently, if you don't invest, you stay on the hamster wheel of life. You keep working for those 40, 50 years and then retire, not with a lot of money or maybe you got a paid off house and you got a little bit of money, okay? But if you start investing, you will mess up. You will make mistakes. You will lose money at times, at time, okay? That will happen. But you got to persevere or you got to stick with it. You got to get back up and keep moving forward. Okay? All right. So, with that being said, here's the breaking news. <laughs> if you watch my YouTube channel and you're interested, I have started an informal group on the, an app called WhatsApp. Okay? WhatsApp. You may or may not know what WhatsApp is, it's a free app. Um, I will use that app more when I'm living outside of the United States because I have found out. From my perspective, my knowledge, the United States, in America, we text with our cell phones. Outside of the, the U.S., at least in Central America, maybe, I think I've heard it's everywhere. They use something like WhatsApp more so to communicate. WhatsApp is free. You don't pay anything. You can make phone calls to another WhatsApp person for free. Um, even when you're outside, you're in different countries, you can do it for free. You can message for free when you're in different countries. So the country I'm going to, Panama, everyone uses WhatsApp, okay? But it's also a way that even if we're all here in the United States, WhatsApp is a great way to communicate. It is free. You can have a group. You can have participants in there, okay? That sort of thing, all right? So that WhatsApp channel is Maskey's, M-A-Z-S-K-E apostrophe S, Investing Adventures, Maskey's Invest, investing adventures. Okay, search it out. Or I'm not an expert on WhatsApp. If you search it out, you might not be able to. Um, you'd have to request to join it, but I don't know if you can do that. Anyway, if you're interested in joining my group, shoot me an email. My email is always in the description below. It's the channel name Maskey Finance at gmail.com. Okay, it's always in the description below. If you want to join the group. Shoot me an email. If I don't already communicate with you, let me know who you are. I'm not just going to let in a random stranger, okay? You might be a spammer that's watching my channel. I'm not going to let you in if I know that, okay? But if you're an investor or you want, seriously want to learn how to invest, I'll let you in. I would have to email you back a link to join, okay? All I ask is that you be respectful. I will share some personal information in there at times. I will share my net worth. I might share monthly cash flow. As my investments grow or sink, I might share mistakes that I make in investing. I might babble about something or another, okay? You, if you join, are welcome to share whatever you wanna share. If you wanna share your net worth or your monthly cash flow or a deal you found in whatever area you're investing in. 
I'm in search. I've had several different people um, tell me that I've helped them to buy up in Gary, Indiana. Okay? That's fine. I like doing that. I have been looking for someone whose coattails I can jump on to invest in another area. So if you happen to join my group and you know of a good area that you're investing in and you're willing to share contacts, I'm not, I'm not going to say do this for me, but if you share contacts, maybe I'll become a fellow investor in that community. Maybe. I'm looking to branch out. Okay? My goal, I mentioned Maskey's tour. Outside the U.S., inside the U.S. One of my goals is to pick up real estate in various locations. Sometimes they might be a vacation home. Sometimes they might be a single family rental. Sometimes they might be an apartment complex as time goes on. Okay? You just never know. I'm trying to have no roots. I'm trying to cut base with different areas and just go out on an adventure as long as my health holds. Okay? Life is here to be lived. Life is here to have an adventure. I want to have an adventure. None of us know how long we're going to live for. I don't know how long I'm going to live for. So while I can, I want to get out there because it may get cut short for any of us at any given moment. So with that being said, if you want to join, let me know. If you don't want to join, that's okay. Mas Maskey's Investing Adventures. So with that being said, this has got long. My apologies. Have a great day. If you're young, think about joining the military. There, that's my little Navy guy I made a long time ago. Talk to you later. Bye now.